In the year 2020, we were no strangers to what a pandemic was, as we were hit by the COVID-19 virus and put on lockdown for 30 days. Similarly, in 1918, the world was hit by the influenza virus, which originated in China, and made its way around the world and affected 500 million people and took the lives of 50 million people. But in 1940, an American physician named Thomas Francis Jr. developed the first version of the flu vaccine. It was originally only distributed to the United States military, then a modified version was given to the American public in 1945. Hi, I'm Julia Larero, and I'm presenting with my colleagues Bridget Hurst, Sam Workman, and Cedric Graham. To what extent are the benefits from the influenza vaccination worth its risks? The influenza vaccine has many benefits that include decreasing the spread of the virus in the community and within healthcare workers. As the spread is lowered, it decreases the chances of death. The vaccine is putting patient healthcare first, and politically speaking, free healthcare is increasing the patient care as well. The spread of the virus has been greatly prevented in the community as the vaccine is more distributed. In a community, there are groups of high-risk individuals such as the younger children and the elderly. The vaccine becomes a preventative measure that others can take to slow down its spread and keep the virus away from these high-risk individuals. In the visual on the right from the CDC, it shows that when around 49% of the U.S. population received the vaccine, it prevented around 3,500 deaths and millions of flu illnesses that season. Within the community, those who take care of the high-risk individuals are the ones should, who should be extra cautious. And this is because they spend large amounts of time with them and they wanna make sure that they aren't the cause of the spread. Like the people in the community, those in the medical field and offices should also take part in decreasing the spread of the influenza virus. Part of the healthcare workers' daily routines are working one-on-one -on -one with patients. In order to keep the patient's health their number one priority, receiving this vaccine will help slow the virus transmission. The visual on the right by the CDC explains in the left column that not only are the healthcare workers protecting the workers around them, but they're protecting themselves and the patients that they're working with. This is very beneficial because it shows the patients that their health is always in consideration. However, the risk that people fear towards the influenza vaccination is getting an allergic reaction from it. The visual on the right shows that common side effects that people can experience are headaches, fevers, and nausea, and swelling and shortness of breath coming from the allergic reaction. Even though the side effects are rare and have little to no chances, it causes people to not want to receive the vaccine because they're fearful of it. However, it's important that the people remember how beneficial and important it is in order to spread its distribution and slow down its spread. When a majority of the population gets the flu vaccination, it decreases the chances of it spreading throughout the population. Pregnant women are the group that is a high risk of severe illness. In the article by Kathleen Davis, she states, a flu shot can reduce the risk of acute respiratory infection by half and lower the risk of hospitalization from the flu by 40%. It protects the baby from the flu for several months after birth. With the results of this, a majority of the population gets the vaccination. It decreases the chances of it spreading throughout and can protect the people with the weaker immune systems that are scared to get the vaccine and may get worse symptoms from it. After you get the vaccination, it is still possible to catch the flu. However, the symptoms are much milder and it makes it harder to spread throughout the population. In the chart shown to the right, it shows that since 2010, up until last year, 2020, the percentage of the population that got the vaccination increased as the spread of the virus has decreased. Taking from my colleague Bridget talked about the importance of getting a vaccine. What happens if you're not able to have access to getting the vaccine? Well, free healthcare can kind of give the people who don't have access to it, access to it. And when you think of free healthcare, 
typically you would think of the two political parties that are dominant in our government at the moment. The Democratic Party, which believes free health care should be a basic human right for our American citizens, and the Republican Party, which doesn't really want to go in the direction of free health care because it would come out of the government's cost and increase taxes for the American people. But the accessibility of the vaccine could be decreasing, so which could be a reason why we should switch to free health care. If you look at the visual, it is a number of uninsured and insured rate among the non-elderly people from 2010 to 2019. From 2010 to 2013, we see an average about of 14% of uninsured people. But when the ACA Act comes in, the Accessibility Healthcare Act, uh, it, dec it dramatically decreases the amount of uninsured people from 2014, 2016, from a 13.5% to a 10%. But as 2017 and progress to the year 2019, we see a decrease in the progress which is made. And there is not, no data on 2020, but typically thinking of the past events that happened last year, people losing their jobs, we could probably infer that the amount of people uninsured went up dramatically, having losing their jobs, not being able to pay for an insurance plan or healthcare plan. And then sometimes jobs often provide their employees with a healthcare plan of their own. But the wait times for receiving the vaccine could be longer. In the visual, it is the United States and Canada, two well-established countries with two different health care health, health care plans, being the difference of Canada having a free health care plan for the for their citizens. And if you look at the visual, we see America having around a 20% average wait time for all specialties. While looking at Canada with their free healthcare system, they have dramatically longer wait times with an average of three times longer across specialties. Now, one effect vaccination has on the economy is the fact that it decreases unemployment generally. Now, it benefits the economy greatly by de decreasing rates of unemployment because most workplaces will see this as a sort of privilege and require the vaccination or see it as a better chance of employing. Now, this does increase the chances of one that is unemployed in getting employed by a workplace as they may specifically look for somebody that is vaccinated in the workplace. Colleges are requiring vaccinations for influenza. Colleges serve as direct pathways towards jobs, towards good jobs, at least. Now, this shows the correlation between degrees and the unemployment rate as you see the doctorate degree doctor degree has the lowest unemployment rate at 1.1 professional degrees at 1.5 masters 1.4 and bachelors at 2.8 as you can see it slowly begins to decrease except for your associates is at a 1.8 here now if you have less than a high school diploma your unemployment rate is all the way as high as 6.0 this just shows how important colleges are towards getting employment and the fact that colleges require vaccination shows how important vaccinations are in general. Also, vaccinations are cheaper. As you can see, they decrease medical and mortality bills associated with fighting the vaccine, the flu. Direct medical and mortality costs can add up to over 16.3 billion annually, which comes out of the pockets of taxpayers and the economy itself. Vaccines, in general, cost only $40 if not covered by health insurance. These are alleged economic drawbacks, as some people do argue that the high uptake of vaccines require, required, prevent, required to prevent spending may cost lots of average workers wanting to protect themselves money. Now, you do have to get the vaccine about two times a year, which may cost too much for the average person, but this, however, it's not as much of an issue when it outweighs medical costs when fighting influenza. As you can see, this shows the average cost of medical costs. Now, it was increasing a lot until 2016, 2017, where it's starting to become a slow decrease through the vaccination is becoming more popular. Any questions? I do have a question for each one of you. We're gonna start with Mr. Workman first, you're up. All right. 
Describe an argument from one of your peers' individual reports that made you think differently about your team's uh, um, resolution. So, I would say the biggest uh, like thing that made me change my mind, at least like art, like disagreements, was um, between Cedric, Cedric and I's lens because how similar Bridget's and Julia's were, it was kind of more on the ethics and the importance of having the vaccine, where ours are kind of like out of the, that ballpark area. So that kind of, when it came to like finding our conclusion, we had to like settle in on where we could, all of us have our lenses conclude and intertwine with each other. All right. Um, Ms. Hirsch, you're up next. In what ways did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Um, the ways we worked, like improved, is we did Zoom meetings to practice our presentations to better have an understanding of what each of us were saying. For example, like how Sam said with Julia and our, our slides, like how they were similar in certain ways. Okay, uh, Julia. In the future, what changes would you make to your group norms and how would you expect that to help your presentation? I think that we would like incorporate having to specifically like show how everybody needed to improve other than just saying what they had good already. So maybe we'd make our arguments stronger and so we could build like a better conclusion other than making it too vague. Okay. Uh, and save the best for last, right, Mr. Graham? Uh, describe how the content of your team presentation changed as a result of you guys talking about stuff. Well, a lot of it was unfinished throughout. Sam told us to delete some words because, you know, too many words on slides took up, explained way too much. We should explain it. So he told us to delete some words. We listened and we just chipped in a little bit as we moved on and as we kept practicing the presentation. Um, we kept adding on to defense questions. We keep adding on to our script. We planned everything out more thoroughly. All right, 